Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter, and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today I'm going to be painting cute cat and I'm sipping on some Earl Grey tea and if you enjoy this process I do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel and that you also check out my Patreon page where you can find additional painting perks such as this one. So this painting that I did today is inspired that by a photo that was submitted by one of my Patreons by the name of Deborah Eckhorn. If I pronounce your name wrong, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so I have this benefit from my patrons where they get to every now and again submit their photos and I take some of them and I turn them into YouTube painting tutorials. And whoever photo I use, they get the original painting from me as a thank you for their submission. So this is uh, based off of that awesome picture, <laughs> this super cute cat, I couldn't resist. So if you're interested in learning how you too could submit your photos or learn more about the Patreon membership program, I have all of that information down below in the video description. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so for my materials today, I'm gonna to be using a stretched and primed 16 by 20 inch canvas. If you're painting along with me, you could certainly switch up the size, but that's what I'll be using. I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. My colors are titanium white, Mars black, fire red, chrome yellow, cobalt blue, and burnt umber, which I like to call brown. And of course you can switch up those colors if you'd like. For my tools today, I have a standard Num oops, I'm going to drop it here. <laughs> Standard number two pencil for some drawing. And then I have three brushes from my personal brush line, which is Michelle the Painter brushes. I have, oh, let me get them in order here. I have a three quarter inch wide flat bristle brush. I have a quarter inch wide flat bristle brush. And I have a number three round synthetic. And I will most likely call these out as I use them, but I might call this one small, this one medium, and this one large, <laughs> or I'll call them by their real names. So those are the brushes I'm using. You can certainly switch yours up if you'd like to. If you're painting along with me, you're probably going to want to have a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, in the video description, I will be providing you with a few additional resources that can help you throughout your painting process. One of them is a link to my shop where you could purchase the same exact paint kit that I'm using from the same size and type of canvas to paints and brushes and all the good stuff in between. You can also purchase in my shop things individually, like the brushes from my brush line. The, another, thing, another link that I have down below for you is a link where you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we're gonna be drawing an outline for our cat. I'm gonna use my pencil. You could certainly use any drawing utensil that you'd like. I'm gonna guide you through a series of markers. We're gonna connect those markers and by the time we're done, we'll have a very, very basic shape <laughs> that we'll be able to utilize during the coloring and process of painting. We're not going for any detail here. We're just simply going for something that's gonna separate the cat from the background. So I'm going to give you a couple of markers and then we'll, we'll connect those markers. So first I'm gonna find myself the center of my canvas, top to bottom, left to right. So for me, that's somewhere in this vicinity. I give you this so we have kind of a point of reference as I'm giving you my markers. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come all the way over to the right hand side at that halfway point, And then I'm gonna come up maybe about a half of an inch or so to, and give myself my first marker. And then what I'm gonna do from my center marker here is I'm gonna come almost halfway between here and the top of my canvas. So somewhere about here, it might be a little bit more uh, closer to the top than it is to here. And I'm gonna give myself another marker. Then I'm gonna go back to my center and I'm gonna go a little bit more than halfway over to this left-hand side. So if this is about halfway, I'm about a half of an inch to three quarters of an inch more to the left than that. That's gonna be my next marker. 
And then I'm going to come down to the bottom of my canvas, the center of the bottom of my canvas, and I'm, come, I'm going to come to the left about, I would say about two and a half inches, somewhere in through here. So this marker, just so you have an understanding, should be to the right of here. So it shouldn't be directly the below or to the left if you want it tipped like mine. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect these four markers with a big kind of arcing oval type of a shape. And I, this doesn't have to be perfect. This is all going to get hidden underneath the fur. This is just something that's going to give us a starting point and a, um, a place where we can um, segregate the cat from the background. Then I'm going to do a couple of ears. So, or kind of ears. <laughs> they're not the real ears. They're just going to be kind of place markers where the ears are going to go. So if I come back up to this marker here and go up above that about an inch and a half, make myself a marker, and then to the left about an inch and a half, and then to the right about two inches, then I can connect these with just an oval, the top of an oval type of a shape. And then I'm going to come down the head in through here about two and a half inches somewhere in through there I can whatever the distance is that you have for this one so I have this as a distance I'm measuring it with my fancy measuring tool my my pencil you can do this one this one's a little bit wider than that one so if this is where the same distance is as that one I'm gonna pull it down just a little bit further something like that and then same goes to for the height so I've got my height of this one is about this tall. If I come over here, I've got this one just a little bit taller than that one. The cat's head is tipped um, and the light source is over here. So this side um, to me appeared a little bit larger. So I'm just gonna make this section a little bit larger in through here. And that's all I'm gonna be doing for my outline. You can certainly make any little adjustments that you want, but we're gonna be using our large paintbrush for the next step so you can just get that out and get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the background and the base coat for the cat. I'm gonna be using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are black, brown, and white. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint my background with black, and then we're gonna create a custom light gray for the, um, for the base coat for the cat. So I'm just gonna start with my background. I'm using my large brush, I picked up black paint. I don't need to do any fancy brush stroke because I know that black covers really well. So all I really need to do is get the coat on there. And for me, I do like my paint to lay nice and flat, which means I don't like to have a lot of like bumps from um, the paint being thick. So I do tend to kind of go back and forth with my brush to make sure that I have any thick spots kind of brushed out. And that way, when the paint dries, it'll be nice and level to my, to my canvas. P uh, acrylic paint does self-level for the most part, especially on the, I use a thin body paint, um, a thin body student grade paint, which has a lot of fluidity in it. So it does tend to self-level, but if I, you know, glob it on and there's some really thick spots, I might get some little bumps and stuff in my canvas. And I don't really like those. So <laughs> I like to have my my paint nice and flat. So as I'm go going right around the um, outline of the cat, I am leaving it kind of a soft edge as opposed to a really firm, clean edge. So I'm just kind of letting it uh, not necessarily blend into that area, but definitely um, a softer edge to it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get this side. And then once I've got this painted in, we'll make a custom color with uh, brown, black, and white. And we'll put a base coat on the cat. So when I did this outline for this cat, I am really, the cat's going to look much bigger than this when I get done because the hair is going to, or the fur is going to overlap on top of this black stuff. So I made my outline smaller than the actual cat head is going to be or is going to appear because it has so much fluffy hair like the fur is going to go almost up to the top of the canvas so just know that if yours looks a little small right now 
it's intentional because I want to be able to see some of that background through that fluffy hair. So that's why I did it that way. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush and I'm going to show you how to create a custom warm light gray for the base coat, which I have magically already done on my palette and I'm going to demonstrate with my small brush. So this is my light warm gray. <laughs> so what this is, is it is mostly white and I have a little bit of black and a little bit of brown in it. So a little bit of brown, that's where the warmth comes from and a touch of black makes it gray. So then I just spin those together and this is going to give me a nice light warm gray tone. So this is what, uh, and it's going to dry a little bit darker on the canvas. So just be prepared mentally for that. But you can see the difference of it next to my white. I definitely want it darker than white so we can build dimension in the fur of the cat. So once I've got that color that I like, I'm just going to take my large paintbrush and paint the entire interior or the entire cat with this color and apparently I'm going to paint my hand too <laughs> so I'm going to do I'm going to stay away from the edges just for a second while that black is um, drying I don't need that black to be totally dry by the time I get there but if it is a little bit dry I'll be able to um, just kind of have, continue on the quest of the soft edges around the cat. So just kind of bringing this all the way over. And again, no special brush stroke. This gray has awesome coverage, so you don't need to worry about um, utilizing any special brush stroke in order to uh, see the direction of it or anything along that line. We're just looking for a base coat that we can build all of our details off of. So that's looking pretty good in through there. Just getting this little ear in through here. So now as I go around these edges, I don't necessarily need to build fur yet, but I can certainly start a little bit of the process just by pulling this out and just crossing it over just a little bit into that uh, black background. And again, if your black is still wet, it's okay. You can certainly, if it starts to blend in there, that's that's just fine. I, what I'm looking for is just not a um, straight edge to, um, to these sections. So I'm just gonna start my little fur process and get it, giving myself these little soft edges just to get the ball rolling. <laughs> and then again, same thing over here. And I'm kind of putting it in the direction that I feel um, the fur is going to inevitably um, go. And if you still see some of your pencil marks like this one um, around this ear, don't worry about it. <laughs> we've, got, we've got tons of stuff to go. So there is no need to, to worry about getting that perfect yet. And so this kind of comes out like this. And then this is going to go down in this direction. And then we're going to be using, um, we're going to actually use, mm, I'm going to, I think I want to use my my, what do I want to do? I'm going to use my pencil for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can um, put this brush away, take out a drawing utensil, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to draw an outline for our facial features. I'm using my pencil. You could certainly use any drawing utensil that's comfortable to you. And I do recommend that your canvas is dry before you start this step. Again, I'm going to guide you through a series of markers. We're going for some basic shapes. And by the time we're done, we'll have something that we can use during the painting process. So I'm going to guide you back to the center of the canvas. So for me, again, my center is somewhere right about in through here. The cat, the cat's head is tipped and we're seeing it at an angle. So there's more of the face and stuff over on this side. We again, the hair will make it look bigger, but right now it's gonna look off center on the head, but I will, I'll show you how to put it there and how it will make sense later. So once I found myself the center of my canvas, I'm gonna come down from that about an inch, inch and a half, and then over to the right, I would say about three quarters of an inch. This is gonna be my first marker right in through there. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go diagonally, a little bit diagonally like this, almost two inches. So I'm at about maybe an inch and three quarters. 
What I'm doing is I'm making a tilted oval type of a shape. I can find myself the center of these two and then go, the, the height of this is gonna be about an inch and a quarter. So I'm go back to the center here and then do half the distance here and then half the distance here. And then I'm gonna connect these and give myself an, a slightly tilted oval type of a shape. So something like this. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark off there's really dark inner corners to these eyes and I really wanna put them in place right now because it'll help space the eyes um, be from one another. So I'm gonna take from in through here and I'm just gonna give myself this little um, like bean type of a shape <laughs> like this, something like that will give me that dark little corner inside the eye. So now what I'm gonna do, my next eye is going to be about the same distance away from this one as this shape is. So you can use any measuring tool that you want. Find kind of the, the widest part in that center like that and then go to the right of that kind of up towards an angle, something like this, and give yourself another little marker. It might be a little bit wider somewhere in through there. I'm going to give you the inside and the outside so you can kind of gauge and see if you're on, on track. So again, they should be kind of tipped like this. The other side of this is going to be somewhere up in this vicinity. I'm going to make an, this was to the, um, to the little inside spacer here. I'm going to go in it from here just a little bit. So the length of this eye in through here, from here to here, if you, if you measure it, should be about the same as this one from about here to here. So just good measurement and then you can do the same thing with however tall you did this one, you can do this one that tall as well. So this one's gonna be a little bit tipped in um, this direction. So if this one goes like this, this one's gonna go like that a little bit. So something like that will give me my next oval like this. And then I have that little inside corner to the eye like that. So now that I have those two placed, now I want to put a little nose on. So I'm going to come in between these two right to the center. I'm at kind of the same angle. And then I can just come down from here to right about in through here, give myself this um, uh, just di soft diagonal kind of a mark. It dips a little bit in the middle, but not a lot. So if you were to kind of line it up with this guy in through here, it lines up pretty well there, but it's a little bit farther away from this one over here. Again, because it's tipped to the side. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come to the center of here and come down here. I would say maybe about a half to three quarters of an inch, something like that. And then you can give yourself that little kind of iconic cat nose, little shape, something like that. I'm going to now give myself a little diagonal line from here. Again, this is only maybe about a half of an inch. It's not long at all. And then I'm gonna give myself the little um, area where the mouth is gonna go. So I'm gonna take it from here, give myself kind of a downward curve like this, and then a downward curve like this. So these should, the, the corners of the mouth, should kind of match up with, um, the right one should match up with like the center of the eye, and then the left one should match up a little bit to the right of the center of the eye, so something like this at a similar angle, maybe a little bit further down like that. And then I wanna put a chin on. So my chin distance is, I'm gonna give you about a good, the chin distance from here to, to where I'm gonna put it is about the same width as the, eye, as the eyes, the distance between the eyes. So for me, I'm gonna just mark myself a little bit of a chin, so that way I know where that bottom of the head is. And again, the distance from here to here is about the same distance as between the eyes, give or take a quarter of an inch or so. <laughs> and that's all I'm gonna be doing for my um, face outline. You could certainly do any little tweaks that you want. We're gonna use our small brush for the next step. So you can put your drawing utensil away, take out a small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna paint the eyes and the nose. I'm using my small brush. The colors that I'm using are black, white, yellow, 
red, and blue. And if I use brown, I'll let you know. I might use brown too, but I'm not sure yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start them with some strategic black marks, which will be the outline of the eyes, uh, the pupils. I'm going to gently outline the edge of the nose, make some little dark nostrils, and then we'll start to build the colored part of them. So when I do this, I am going to most likely be using water on my brush, especially when I'm using like the black paint so I can have f good fluidity in my brush and I can get some nice clean lines. So I've got my watered down, little bit of watered down black paint on my brush right now and I'm going to put in place this exterior um, outline for this particular eye. I will be, of course, um, finessing this a little bit when I go through the process of painting the colors and stuff in the eye um, and also when I'm doing my marks around the eye with the with the fur and stuff like that um, but right now I'm just kind of getting myself a nice outline I, a lot of times I'll start eyes with black <laughs> for the whole thing but these eyes are so light and they have such beautiful um, kind of uh, greenish and blue and yellow tones. I, I wanted to be a little bit more gentler with starting this. Um, I am doing a soft edge as the this eye um, on this black as it's entering like where the color part of the eye is gonna go. So just kind of softening that edge just a little bit in through there. I'm gonna put my pupil on, so kind of dead center in the eye, a little bit of an oval shape um, tipped in the same direction that the eye is being is tipped so something like this it doesn't go all the way down to the bottom and it doesn't go all the way up to the top this cat must have been in some great lighting when it was photographed because it's got it's got some some definite um, uh, evidence of being near bright light and one of them is the small pupils so whenever you see some an animal or a person with small pupils that means that they are um, definitely near some bright lights that are making the making their pupils nice and small like that <laughs> which is really cool it gives some good photo effects when you when you have the opportunity to um, to get models that are in bright light so you get to see a lot of the the colored part of those eyes so just kind of wrapping this around like this I'm gonna give a little soft edge and some of this black, especially on this one up towards the top, it is probably going to be covered with some fur by the, by the time um, the whole painting is done. But I'm just trying to get this structure in here. And then I'm going to do my, um, my little pupil. So trying to place it similarly to that one. But again, this side of the, um, of the head is more in the light. So this pupil is even... It appears to be a little bit smaller than the other one in the photograph so as I'm um, doing this I'm just kind of being mindful of that as well and just kind of dot in some of this there we go I'm gonna put a little bit of black around the nose too I've got um, my dark edges in through here I'm gonna put these cute little nostrils like that I'm gonna just kind of lightly or gently messily <laughs> outline the exterior of the nose. I often when I'm doing um, especially animals I really like to use soft touch. I like to use um, um, kind of messy edges. I feel like there's a little kind of divot in the nose kind of sticking out on these edges so I'm just putting that there. Um, I know that they're going to be um, intermingling with fur and stuff so at the top of the nose here I'm just kind of dotting it with my with my brush so I can uh, intermingle that with the fur that's going to be around it. There's just a little hint of a shadow in through here and then at the mouth itself is not visible so we're just going to be uh, creating the appearance of that with uh, the fur color later on. So that's looking pretty good. Now I'm going to wash and dry my brush I'm going to start adding the colors in the eyes. So this is where I'm going to be using blue, yellow, and white. So blue and yellow is going to make a greenish color. And these eyes appear to be uh, the right, our right eye, the cat's left eye, is definitely darker 
than this one because this one is in the light more and that both of them take on the same characteristics that they're darker around the pupil and then the colored part gets lighter and lighter as it goes out. So I'm gonna do kind of like a gradient starting with blue and yellow in the middle and wherever I see that it's the darkest and then I'm gonna fade it out to like a, a light yellow. I'm gonna be using a stippling or a polka dotting type of effect. So I have blue and yellow on my brush and I'm gonna start just kind of dotting this in right by that pupil. I can always add or uh, bring that pupil back on top in a little while, but right now I just kind of want to get a base coat on here um, of these colors that I want to, um, that I can use to just build the eye a little bit more. And I'm going with my darker tones kind of to start, and then that way as I build towards um, the lighter areas of the eye, I can just add more like little speckles and stuff to, to account for the little twinkly stuff. So as I'm moving farther and farther away from this dark part, I'm just letting myself kind of run out of paint. And that is giving me um, the, uh, the ability to just make these lighter kind of marks. So something like that works for that one. I'm gonna go do a similar process on the other one, but I feel like it's gonna be too dark. So I'm actually gonna start, I blue, yellow, and just a tiny touch of white also on my brush. I just don't want this to be too dark on this side. So I went blue, white, and a little bit of yellow. And I could always get, you know, add a little bit more darkness to it if, if I wanted to. Um, but this is where I'm starting and I can adjust it after that. So don't feel like you ever have to be perfect on the first go around. So as I'm doing this, if I'm saying, oh, well, it's a little bit too green right now, or it's a little bit too yellow right now, I'm all right with that because I know I'm gonna come back and give a little bit of adjustment for the for the twinkles in the eye and the sparkle in the eye. And, and I know that that process is coming, so I'm okay with that. I'm okay with it not being perfect right off the bat. And this is a, a, a good start. And while this is kind of settling so I don't overdo it, I'm gonna go and do that nose and then I'll come back and finish the eyes. So I'm gonna wash and dry my brush. The nose on this little cat is kind of orange to me. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of um, yellow, red, and white and give myself a little kind of orangey type of a tone. So you could use them all on your brush at the same time, but I'm feeling like I just wanna kind of pre-mix myself a little orangey type of a color. So that's yellow, red, and a little bit of white. And I'm just gonna kind of paint this on in a solid color like this. And then I can add um, little shadows and little highlights to make it more representational of a real nose. <laughs> so that's looking pretty good. I'm now gonna pick up a touch of red and brown. I wiped my brush off, I picked up a touch of red and brown, so I guess I am using brown, where I wasn't sure if I was going to or not. And I'm gonna put a little dip of um, shadow down right in this little bottom part of the nose. I'm also gonna put a little bit up on these corners in through here. So this is just a little bit of red and brown, a uh, little tiny bit up in through here, not a whole heck of a lot, just seeing where I can see some little shadowy areas on that nose. That's looking pretty good. And then I'm gonna uh, pick up that orange plus some white to give just little, little pops of uh, contour highlights, maybe right in through there. We've got one in through here, a little more in through here and so I just a lot of times you'll see I, I start with that base coat and then or which is a mid-tone of what the dominant color is that I'm seeing in a particular area and then I just start adjusting my little shadows and highlights so I think that's all I need to do for the nose so I'm just going to go ahead and finish my eyes now so the eyes I feel that they've got a very faint kind of yellowy uh, color around the edges. So I'm going to again use white plus just a touch of yellow. Um, so this is white plus just a touch of yellow to get some vibrant uh, light tones over here on the edge. And again, I'm most likely going to just be stippling these eyes because there's so many little speckles of color in them that I'm seeing. So I want to make sure that I, I capture that. Coming over in this side, I'm feeling like I've got a little bit more of like a light green, so I'm just using my yellow, 
um, blue and white to get just little more speckles in through here and again if you feel like you do too much or you know just let it dry for a minute don't feel like you have to overdo it and and you know make it too too colorful or anything like that just let it dry and and you can adjust it once it's dry so that i think is a pretty good representation of the colored part i'm probably gonna make it a little bit darker um, up in through here, but I'm going to do the same. I'm going to first finish this eye or bring this eye to um, the level of this one first. So over here, I want to use that light um, yellow, which was just yellow and white on my dirty brush. So this one's got a real light area right in through here. So I want to just make sure that I capture that. So this is again, just yellow, white, and um, whatever the remnants on my brush were. I'm picking up just a little bit more white over here on this left-hand side. And as I'm doing this, again, I'm not, I'm really just looking for some color patterns in these eyes to, um, to get it to look as representational of the actual photo um, reference. So to me, sometimes I struggle with knowing what piece is what and you know how to translate this color or um what exactly am i seeing i don't trust the photo all that time all the time and that gets me into trouble when i stop trusting what that photo is telling me um so when i do want to go in full on into photo realism i just gotta trust i gotta look at that photo and say okay I see green there, I'm putting green there. I don't know why it's there, but I'm putting it. And that helps me work through that, that, that process of um, not trusting <laughs> it <laughs> because it is what it is. I mean, I can't, I don't have power over um, that aspect. I'm gonna darken up this little tops area with, um, I'm picking up black to make sure my pupil is fully um, there. And then I'm gonna uh, put a little shadow up at the top and we're almost we almost got these just kind of making sure that pupil sinks in and is part of those and then I'm going to use a little bit of watered down black at the top of the eye just to this side is a little bit darker than the other side so I want to make sure that I capture that so this is just almost like a little shadow up in through here watered down black make sure there's lots of fluidity in there so you can capture that um, transparency of the paint that looks pretty good and on this side I don't really have much of the shadow um, again because it is um, a, from a different um, way or under a different kind of lighting there is going to be fur over this area in through here so actually I think I need a little bit more of my green yellow and white just bring this part up just a little bit higher in through here to make sure that We've got that as high as I need it to go. So when I do put the fur on, I'm not um, struggling with figuring out what to do there. And then I'm gonna, I need to put, finish this pupil here, just a little bit of watered down black, make sure I've got this. And if your pupils aren't popping enough, you can put a tiny bit of a light ring around them um, with your with light colors so you could pick up a little bit of blue green and white and just kind of make a tiny little adjustment right around those pupils sometimes that will help if you're doing this type of painting with very colorful eyes and um, you know things aren't popping the way that you anticipated them to you can always um, make those little bit of adjustments with uh, an added uh, contrast element and that will help to make something pop out so that looks pretty good to me now I'm gonna um, add my my reflection so washing and dry my brush there's a small reflection on this eye I'm gonna actually start with my light gray a little bit of my uh, the color that I used for the fur so light gray I didn't say I was gonna use that but I'm gonna use that color and I'm just doing there's just these little shapes so there's a little tiny shape here and it kind of gets bigger as it comes farther away. So I'm just emulating the little shape that I see <laughs> in this, in the little, um, in the photograph. And it comes pretty, pretty far down in through here. So I'm just putting in that little shape. I think that that's looking pretty good, but my shape is not popping out as much as I want, which tells me the color to the right of it is not dark enough. So I just wipe my brush off, picking up a little bit more 
blue and yellow and I'm going to just uh, put a little bit darker darkness right here on that side and then I can pop just a touch of white onto here just to make it pop just a little bit more. There we go. And then on the left hand side there is a um, a reflection. It almost looks like it's kind of like a light blue reflection so I'm going to use white with a touch of blue just to give myself a tiny uh, little light blue color. It crosses over the um, pupil a little bit and then it just kind of dots itself over in through here, here, and then we've just got a couple of little lines in through here. And then I would let mine dry, uh, see if I need to, oh, I need a little skin part on the inside of my um, skin right here. I just picked up some of my gray color. Just put a little skin piece. That one doesn't have any, but now I'm picking up black just to make sure that this blends in. And then once I've got this done, I'll let mine dry. And if there's any little fiddling that I feel I need to do, I certainly will. But I'm going to be using my large brush for the next step. So you can put your small brush away, take out your large brush, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're going to do for the next step is we're going to do the first layer of the fur. I'm going, to be, oops, I'm going to be using my large brush to paint. I'm going to use my small brush to pre-mix a couple of custom colors. The colors I'm going to be using in this step are black, yellow, white, brown, uh, and my gray. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a couple of custom colors. One of them is going to be kind of my, sh my dominant shadow color, which is going to be, I'm going to call it like a khaki type of a brown color tannish khaki color um, and then I'm going to do what will be kind of the dominant color in the fur. My gray to me is my undertones. I'm going to have, um, I'm going to make like a bay, a light creamy color for the majority of the fur um, and then we'll build some highlights on top of it later. So right now we're going to be putting in place shadows we're going to be putting in place the one ear that I can see <laughs> in the photo um, and any kind of dark areas, we're going to get those in place and then we're going to um, put the main coat of the fur on. So I'm going to first start by making pre-mixing my colors. The khaki color that I have here on my palette, this is going to be my dominant kind of shadowy type of a color. How I got to this was I used my gray that I had created I added a little bit of brown, a little bit of black, and a touch of yellow. So the yellow is going to bring it into this khaki, almost with a greenish tinge type of uh, um, hue to it. And I'm using this because th these are the tones that I was seeing in the shadows of this of this fur. It certainly you can see it in different ways but I'm thinking that this is going to be a great um, a great accent to the fur in those shadowy type of areas. So that's the color I'm going for for that. The next color I'm going to make is my cream type of a color. So this is it right in through here. How I got to this is mostly white. So a lot a lot of white and then just a tiny touch of brown and a tiny touch of yellow. So just a teeny tiny touch of brown and a teeny tiny touch of yellow and that's going to bring it into this beautiful light beige type of a color. That was too cautious on my part. A little, little, little bit more than that. There we go. <laughs> that should do it. Um, and I don't need it to be anything more than a little bit darker than white. So again, this is part of my building process. I want to save my white for last so it has the best impact on the painting. If I bring it in too soon, you're not going to be able to, it, you can only go so white. So you can see how much darker this is than my white. So this is how I'm going to start. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using my large bristle brush. I'm going to start with my khaki color and I'm going to be putting some dark areas in place such as underneath this chin. I don't have a lot of paint on my brush. I'm just going to start kind of um, adding these darker areas where I feel that they would benefit me and where I feel that I'm seeing them in the, um, in the photograph. So I, I'm seeing a little bit of these in through here. I also see a touch of this 
in where the mouth is. So I can use this as my little kind of shadow maker as it's coming out of that mouth. And again, I will be um, doing all kinds of additional layers to this, but this helps to start that process of where I'm seeing those dark areas. I am going to, I see a lot of darkness down in through here. I'm probably going to pull in maybe even a touch of black down in through here just to get these super dark tones that I'm seeing. But right now I'm just going to play with this um, this khaki color right now. And then if, as, as I develop it a little bit more, I'll, I might add a little bit darker. This kind of comes over in through here. So bringing this down in through here. I feel like I want this to be developed a little bit more but I don't want to put too much more of this khaki, so I'm going to actually pick up a little bit of my gray as well. So this is khaki plus my gray in this area, just so I can have um, another layer in through there, but not uh, not too light. Um, and same thing, there's going to be a light patch in through here, so that's why I'm kind of reserving a little bit of that. Same thing with this little chinny chin chin, but I think I need something in through there. There we go. That looks pretty good. So now I'm going to move around the face. So picking up a little bit more of that khaki color. I can only in the photograph see the detection of the inside of one of the ears and it's this one over here. So I'm taking a little bit of this khaki color and just kind of giving myself a little bit of a dark area in through here so I can um, stay true to the photo which is what I'm my my goal is today <laughs> so something like that is pretty good for me on that and then where are my other dark areas so I have dark in between these eyes so I'm going to take a little bit of this khaki and I'm going to kind of I'm stippling it I'm dotting it something like this and I see that it kind of goes right towards those eyes in through here and then maybe a little bit in through here down on the bridge of the nose, it looks like it's got some darker tones to it, like the like a darker gray, maybe. So I'm going to just kind of lay a little bit of this khaki in through here, but I'm going to have to develop that a little bit more with a different color in a few minutes. Uh, I see a little bit of this color in through these cheek areas, in through here, in through here. This kind of looks like it's rounding out the face, showing me... Um, what that shape of the face is. I hardly have any paint on my brush. I want to stress that because um, you can very easily go too far too quickly if you have too much paint on your eyes. Uh, paint too much paint on your eyes. <laughs> too much paint on your brush. <laughs> Sorry, I'm painting the eyes and I'm like, there's too much paint. No, that it's on the brush. So if you have too much paint on your brush, you can run yourself into some trouble. But I'm seeing some of this color up in the corner of these eyes. So I'm going to put it on in through there. And then there's this cute little um, area of um, like eyebrow bone poofy sections in through here. So I'm going to use a little bit of my khaki color to just almost kind of accentuate those little areas in through here. They kind of come up around that eye, something like that. This is what where the expression is going to start to take shape on the cat. And then it kind of gets a little bit darker up in through here. So just bringing a little bit of that color up in through there. I see a tiny bit of darkness up on the head little bit in through here just probably because of the light is so over here it probably is shadowing a little bit up in through here so just a tiny bit in through there and then i also see some over in through here however we need to add a bunch more fur onto this side as well before we um, do too much more shadowing down here my shadow is probably going to be just my gray so i'm picking up just a little bit more of that gray on my dirty brush and just kind of making sure I've got a second coat down in through there. So now I'm going to start picking up my gray plus my cream color to add my uh, to add that um, full second coat onto here. You could wash your brush if you wanted to, but I think I'm going to just start with my the remnants on my brush, pick up a little bit more of my gray and my cream color. And I'm going to start in my darker areas because I know that I have a little bit of those darker tones on there right now. So I can start in through here. I see that there's kind of a, a bigger area 
of longer fur in through here and then cascading down in through here. I'm definitely going to need to put some more darkness down in through there. So I might kind of hold off on that for a second here. And then I'm going to just use the remnants of my brush to just kind of tap in this additional kind of layer on this mouth. This is where I'm going to start to get rid of my pencil mark. So I'm just kind of tapping this right over that a little bit in through here. And whenever I'm doing fur, I'm always thinking of what direction that fur is going in. So I know that um, as I develop it, it makes it look much more natural. So right now I hardly have any paint on my brush, just kind of going over this area in through here. I do want to hit this before I tackle the rest of the fur. I'm not going to wash my brush. I'm just picking up a tiny bit of black paint, this itty bitty bit of black paint. I'm actually going to wipe it off on my paper towel and let's just go for it and see what happens with this on, on here. I just need this little darkness down in through here. So I'm going to pull it up in a couple of these pieces of hair. I'm going to put a tiny bit of water on my brush so I can get little skinnier pieces coming up in through here. And I'm just kind of pulling it up where I feel it's uh, representing in the in the photo. So that's looking pretty good. I don't need to do much, much more than that. I just knew I needed that little those little pops of darkness down there to um, get it to have that dimension. So I, since I black on my brush, now I de definitely need to wash my brush. So I'm washing and drying my brush, and I just want to do a second layer on the whole um, on the whole fur. So again, I'm going to be using my gray plus my um, my cream color, and this is where I'm going to start to extend all of my fur out as far as I want it. So in through here. This is kind of coming off the face and just bringing it just a smudge past my, or overlapping my outline on this side. It's not um, much, the fur doesn't extend much farther than my um, outline. So I'm just gonna bring that like that and keep picking up my cream plus my, my gray. And you'll see as we um, start adding the additional or the final kind of layers onto this, how this, uh, layering process is going to benefit us. As I'm coming through these eyes and through the face, I'm just going to start switching direction on my brush stroke. So it's kind of something like that around this face and then just kind of lays right down on this, on this side in through here like that. The ear, we've got lots of fur on the ear um, and on the face. There's lots of fur everywhere. I think I'm going to hit the um, other side of here so we can just kind of go um, one for one. We did this side, now let's go do this side. So this side's going to be a little bit darker. I'm going to pick up a um, little bit more of my gray and just a touch of my um, cream color. And it kind of comes out in through here. We're going to get this, this little cheek. This is really extended pretty far out in through here. So I want to almost make this edge disappear. So just bringing it out in through here. And um, as it comes towards this face, I'm gonna do the same thing that I did on the other side, just kind of tapping it and pulling it in that direction that I feel that the fur is moving and it kind of wisps out in through here. I mean, these little edges of the hair are so wispy. So I'm trying to account for that. I'm picking up a little bit of my khaki color because I feel I need to in this little area in through here. Just getting this to blend in a little bit more. And then up uh, in the center of, the, let's do the cheeks first. I'm going to pick up a little bit of my uh, gray uh, with my cream color. I'm going to be doing a different kind of brush stroke, just a little tapping brush stroke just to get this on in through here. Do the same thing over here. There's um, almost little rows of the uh, whisker area. So just kind of starting that process, just a little almost um, giving these little kind of rows. And then in through the face, just gonna tap this in like this and same thing on this side and then just dot it on that bridge of the nose. Again, we've got another one or two layers to go on this fur. So right now we're just kind of putting in place where everything's going, what kind of direction it's going um, on the forehead in through here. Again, I'm, I'm working with my gray plus my cream color. And this is gonna be um, 
uh, we're going to bring it up in this direction and then up in this direction um, and, and it kind of goes into, it kind of goes from a, a dotting to a pulling. So it's kind of really short in through here where it's meeting those, um, those uh, dips in the face and then it's going to pull longer as it goes out those, those ears and stuff. Um, the head part kind of goes like this, just bringing it back in that direction and then around those eyes. I think I'm going to switch to just, um, I feel like I might have too much of that khaki color on my brush, but I'm, I almost was going to wash my brush, but I think I'll stay with the cream and the gray still on my brush. I'm going to uh, cross this over this ear in through here. So this is where this is going to come out really far. So almost however wide that ear is, you can bring some of this, some of this fur just kind of cascading out and in, into here, crossing over this line like this. And again, doesn't have to be perfect at this point. You don't have to make it exactly as, as I'm making it. I'm just kind of um, emulating what I'm seeing in the photograph. And again, I will further develop this as, as I go through the process, but right now just kind of wanting to get an idea of where I want all of these little fluffy pieces to go. Now's the time where I'm gonna start extending these little um, feather, feathers, oh God. <laughs> um, fur outside the ears. I'm seeing how far, watch how far this goes. This is going to go really far. And it doesn't necessarily have to go super straight either. There's these, uh, I'm seeing that some of these pieces are kind of riley and kind of wiggly a little bit, but um, I'm trying to emulate what I'm seeing in this photo. So this kind of goes up a little bit to the left in through here. And then this kind of splays out up in through here. Oh my God, he's gonna be so cute. This guy over here, sorry, goes all the way over here, just about touches the edge of the canvas. Got a little funny piece coming up in through there. And again, I'm just kind of softening or letting these pieces be almost transparent or see-through along um, the edges in order to give them that um, single hair kind of look. We've got a big piece kind of coming out like this. And if you needed to, you could certainly, again, put a tiny bit of water on your brush. That's gonna help to um, give more singular type of pieces. Um, but I'm thinking that this is a really good start for how I wanted to um, do this step. I've got a second coat of fur on the entire cat. So that works out well. And then we'll start to build all those little nuances in the fur on the next step. So once you've got this done, if you can ever stop making these cute little um, pieces of fur, you can, and I think this wants to go out farther here too. You can, um, oh, we're gonna use this same brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can, no, let's use the, um, let's use the small bristle brush. So we're gonna use the small bristle brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can um, put this brush away, take out the small bristle and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the fur on the face. I'm gonna be using my small bristle brush. We will be doing like whiskers and all the fine-tuned detail. We'll do those later. This is just gonna be the fur on the face. So this is the brush I'm gonna use, my small bristle brush. The colors I'm using are gray, khaki, black, white, that orange mixture that we made, probably the cream color. <laughs> and brown. So probably everything except for yellow and blue. What I'm going to do is I'm going to accentuate my dark areas again in order to make sure I have the texture that I want and then I'm going to build the light pieces on after that. So what I have first done is I made myself a darker version of the gray. So I have on my palette here I took my um, light, lighter shade of gray and just added a touch of black to it because I know I want a couple of deeper darker tones in um, the face but I, I didn't want to go all the way black um, in most of these areas and I had a feeling if I just used black plus the light gray on my brush I would run the risk of going too dark in some areas so I just made a little darker version of my gray and I might use a little bit of black too, but right now I'm just gonna start with this dark gray and I'm gonna put some of this in um, 
strategic areas. So I know that I've got some, some darker, I think I need to go a little darker than that. I know it's going to go darker as it dries, but I'm going to put a little bit of brown in it too. A little bit of black and a little bit of brown. <laughs> I just want to make sure I have that good um, kind of textural element and making sure I have the right tone going into it is going to help help me out because that's not turning dark enough for me So on my canvas. So I need to go just a little bit darker. There we go. That looks good. So now that I've got that, let's try that again. So I'm going to go a little, yeah, there we go, a little darker right in through here. I'm going to put a little, little bit around those, those nostrils in through here. So this is just adding to that, all of those little textural elements I'm going to put a different kind of rusty color underneath the, the mouth. I need some up on this side and through here. I'm going to be dotting with a stippling technique going up in through here because I know um, that I just want it to look kind of speckly in through here. I do need it to kind of um, blend in with that little dark mark too. Something like that works bringing this up in through here. So I'm using a combination of just little speckle marks as well as pulling it a little bit, but mostly just speckle marks to get this darkness in through here. There's um, the little um, areas where the, the whiskers are gonna come out. So I'm gonna just put little little marks in through uh, where el wherever I put, um, I had light here. So I'm gonna go in between those and kind of make Little, little extra bits of darkness, something like that. Same thing on this side. Not much, just a itty bitty bit. This left side is definitely a little lighter than the right side anyway, so just something like that will work. Tiny little bit of this kind of coming um, up on top of the nose, in through here, and then maybe just a itty bitty bit in through here. I hardly have any paint on my brush right now. I'm just kind of using um, the little remnants to just kind of get these dark shadowy areas in here. I'm wiping my brush off of my paper towel right now so I can have even less on my brush. I know I need a couple of little um, darker areas in through here. That looks pretty good. I think right here needs to be a little bit darker too. So I often when I'm doing these um, fur compilations. <laughs> I, I definitely like to use a combination of a dry brush uh, versus wet brush. So right now I'm, I'm using my dry brush technique, which is where I have hardly any paint on my brush and it's just the remnants and I'm going and I'm finding these spots. Oh, that was kind of outside the face. <laughs> Come back to the face. Um, I'm finding these areas that I want to um, put the a little bit of darkness but not a ton so I can just use that that little bit of remnants on my brush to um, accentuate those areas that I want to have the uh, an, a little bit extra shadow in them or even when I go to do the highlights the just using this remnants really helps me to get these um, gradations within the uh, values of that fur. So I'm putting a little bit more in through here. So this is the dark gray, but very little bit of it on my brush right now. And I'm just kind of getting it to um, turn this right side of the nose a little bit darker, add a little bit more depth in the fur that's going to be happening in through here. There's a light spot on the nose right here. So I want to make sure that I keep that. Uh, and then this little area here, I already started it, but going to add a little bit more. Same thing with this corner of the eye. Now I'm plumb out of paint on my brush, so I'm putting a tiny bit more on and wiping it off on my paper towel so I can just make sure I maintain my control. I think that looks pretty good for all the areas that I want the darkness. Now I'm going to pick up just a little bit more of that um, khaki color, make sure that I've got this uh, area up in through here as um, filled in as I want because I'm seeing it's a little bit more dominant in the picture, in the photograph. So just kind of um, making sure I've got it. Well, there was a little extra yellow on it on that one section. Let's get that off of my brush. Um, so just making sure wherever I do see that khaki color that I've got it well represented. I'm going to put a little bit of um, that orange tone that we created for the nose, picking up a little bit of that plus a touch of brown on my brush. I'm going to put a little um, uh, darker area underneath in through here. So this was that orange tone plus a little bit of brown 
on my brush and this is just going to kind of pull these little dark uh, tones out from the mouth and of course you can shape this whatever way you want if you want your your cat to have a different shaped um, mouth feel free to do so that's looking so cute <laughs> I'm gonna pick up a little bit more of I'm wiping my brush off picking up a little bit more of that orangey um, type of a tone just to bring it down just a little bit further out and through here that looks pretty good I'm just kind of tapping and pulling it in um, the direction that I'm seeing those little pieces of fur. And I think I wanna put a touch of this in this corner of the eye like that and a touch up in through there. That's looking pretty good. I'm gonna wash and dry my brush now and I'm going in for some highlights. So wash and dry my brush. I'm gonna be using that cream color and white, uh, maybe a little bit of my gray too. I'm gonna to put more on this chin. So I'm picking up some of that cream color and gray because um, again, I don't want this to go too, too light. So my gray is going to con help me control myself um, to not go too, too white or too, too light. So this is just these little chinny piece, chin pieces in through here. I like using these bristle brushes because, uh, especially on fur, because it helps me to get these uh, little individual type of um, pieces of fur without having that solid line to it. And I can um, really kind of uh, just build that fur in a nice natural way. I think I need a little bit more of my cream color so we can see it a little bit better. And right now I'm going around the chin. So as I'm doing this, I always am thinking, what, what piece of the body is that fur going around? And if I can't figure out what piece it's going around, I just gotta see the direction of that fur. So I'm seeing that it's kind of bumping out and that's gonna give it the direction um, I think I need. So I think the chin's pretty good for now. Let me work on the rest. I'm gonna put just a little bit of that um, cream color on. I'm going to start uh, on my nose here with some some little speckles and just dotting. So this is giving me that um, short hair appearance right by this eye and on the bridge of this nose in through here. And I'm just kind of watching the color pattern on the photo. It starts to look like I can see the direction of the fur in through here. So I'll start tapping it in that direction. So sometimes I find as I'm, as I'm doing fur especially, I tend to, I try not to float too far around the canvas, but I do find that if I've got a color on my brush that is working really well for, for um, to create a specific effect and I can see that effect is um, also somewhere else, I will float with my with my brush to that other area if I can if I detect it. Um, so that's looking pretty good. I'm going to pick up some more of that cream color and get myself some light. I'm not using um, the gray anymore right now. I'm just picking up the cream color in order to get uh, some lighter tones in through here. <laughs> it's so cute. Again, this left side is going to be lighter. It's going to be, I'm going to add more white to this left side, but right now I'm just kind of getting these, um, this, this tone on here. I'm going to just use this stippling right in through here, pull it underneath this eye. And again, I'm trying not to go farther than the face right now. Um, so I, that's why I'm trying to just kind of contain myself in this area. I do want to uh, put a little bit more over on this right side and in the eyebrows, and then we'll go, um, then we'll go on to the full white. So just a little bit more of this cream color in through here, bringing this in through here. And again, just layering these colors in a, uh, in a purposeful way allows for this dimension to really just take shape, take form. Um, again, I don't need as large of light areas on this right side. Um, because it looks like this right side is a little bit more in the dark, but um, or has a little bit less light being shown on it. But I, oops, I, oops, it's always great when the instructor says oops. Um, but I do definitely need some of um, some of the lightness. So this is where maybe I pick up a little bit of my gray too, just to control myself so it doesn't go too too light. Trying to watch the um, direction of that fur. 
something like this looks pretty good. And then um, I want to kind of hit these eyebrow areas and then we'll we'll add um, the, the, the lightness to that nose area. So I'm thinking that this needs just a little bit more pull out right here, a little bit more brightness in through here like that. That looks pretty good. And everything needs to connect. So if you're doing this and you're saying, well, I, you know, that area looks good, but it's so disconnected from, you know, the, 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 the nose area looks good, but it's disconnected from the side of the face. Then you need to work on it and get it to, to connect because they, they all, they all touch one another. And if, if you're doing one technique in one area and you're getting a certain type of effect for it, it, that's great, but it needs to somehow connect to the area next to it. So even like this little khaki part here, I think it looks good, but it's, it needs a touch of the, um, the cream color just to connect those and get it to fade into one another. So now I'm going to pick up some white paint on my dirty brush and I'm going to just hit some of these areas with a little bit of white. So I definitely want some, some white in through here give myself a little bit of um, these little pieces in through here, get that to puff out a little bit more. I definitely need some in through here. So this is gonna come down like this and down like this. So, and again, I'm just kind of watching the photo and seeing what it's doing with these, um, these varying tones. So I'm in my white now. I, I can't go any whiter than white. So in, you know, I say that, but if you have dark layers underneath, you could certainly um, build that, that white with a couple of layers, but um, white's white. So <laughs> I think this needs to actually come down further in through here. Um, and you can always bring back some of the darkness too if you're going through the process and you and you say, well, that I just, I went too white, too, too much, I can't pull it back. Um, you can always add a little bit of darkness. Right now I'm just, putting this lightness under the eyes. I definitely need to put some in this cheek area. So something like that, but I still want you to be able to see the difference into this nose. So right now I'm putting some white on, heavy white right here on this. Let me just turn my, my brush a little bit so I can get it in the direction I want like that. That's pretty white. And then I'll just kind of get it to, um, tap away, tap away from here. And then that'll help um, with this concentrated area of brightness. And then I just let myself kind of run out of paint as I'm moving towards that bridge of the nose, just tapping it. And that's giving me that, um, that textural element that I want. And it's going darker as it goes over towards that right hand side. I need a little bit more. Um, Oh, it's looking pretty good. I don't know how much more white I need. Maybe just a little tiny bit in through here. And of course, I always uh, say I'll let it dry and see if there's any additional, you know, marks and stuff that I want to make. But, you know, as long as you've got it pretty, you know, satisfactory to, to your eye, you can, um, you know, you can call it. But we're going to be using our large brush for the next step. I'll probably do a little bit more work with my large brush, especially on these, um, around these eyes as we go into the next step. Um, so once you've got this done, if you can ever stop putting a little bit more lightness in through here, um, we're gonna use that large brush. So you can put this brush away, take out your large brush, and, <laughs> I can't stop, and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're gonna finish the fur. I'm using my large bristle brush. The colors that I'm gonna use are, let's see here, I'm definitely gonna use white, <laughs> uh, my cream color, uh, maybe a little bit of the khaki, a little bit of the light gray, and I need a little bit of brown on the inside of this ear. And if I use any other colors, I'll let you know. So I'm gonna start on the inside of this ear because I feel like I need to amp it up just a smudge. I'm gonna uh, pick up just a tiny bit of brown paint just so we can have a little extra darkness inside this ear, something like this. I don't need to do much, just a little, little tiny bit so we can see it a little bit better. I'm also gonna put 
a little um, white around it as well before we go any farther. So that's going to be that. I'm going to just wipe my brush off, pick up a touch of white paint on the tip of my brush and just give myself a little um, kind of ear. <laughs> <laughs> something something that we can uh, detect just a little bit underneath that fur that we're going to be putting it in a minute. I probably made that too pointy. I'm going to make it a little rounder. There we go. It's going to be hidden under the fur anyways, but I think that looks pretty good. Um, so now that I've satisfied myself with the ear, <laughs> what we're going to do, I'm going to wash and dry my brush so I don't get confused. And I'm going to start with my darker fur and I'm going to work my way to the lighter fur. So my darker fur is primarily on that right side of the body. And I also want to put little bits of darkness um, along some of the edges of this exterior fur so I can have some dimension to it. Um, and then we're going to build our way to the light. So I'm going to start with a tiny bit of gray and that khaki color on my brush at the same time, just an itty bitty bit. So this way I can intermingle um, a little bit of these darker notes on, on this exterior. So this is a time where you might find that this isn't the brush for you. Maybe you want to use the smaller bristle brush or you want to use a different kind of brush. For me, I like using these. Actually, I'm going into my dark gray too. I didn't say I was going to use dark gray, but I'm using dark gray. Um, I wanted a little more separation between these little guys up here. Um, I like using these brushes because I can control and I, I like the, the way that I can control the tip of it um, and the bristles, but sometimes it can get a little um, cumbersome, I guess, for lack of a better word. If you can't control your pressure, you might end up making everything one solid color. So if that's the case, you can certainly use a brush that you can control a little bit better. Um, but I definitely want to have these little tiny hairs coming out. So this is where I can take a tiny bit of water on my brush and just use the corner of my brush and just get these little itty bitty pieces of hair with the water on my brush is going to make them look really dainty, really like they've got a bit of um, transparency to them, dimension to them, and it, it, I'm overlapping it into the black area. So this is where my, my little fine pieces of hair are going to come and be visible. So again, this is kind of my uh, my khaki, my dark gray, a little bit of water. You could even, um, I'm noticing in the, in the photo that this cat has little um, wiggly kind of pieces of fur. So you could kind of take your brush and just wiggle it a little tiny bit at those ends, maybe using um, the smaller brush, the smaller bristle brush to do that if you feel that that's some, an element that you want to um, incorporate. I apparently I want to incorporate it, so I'm going for it. <laughs> but you don't have to do these little um, tiny little ones if you don't want to. And again, I'm doing these darker ones around the edge because those are the ones that are um, going to be evident, really evident once I um, put that bright fur on at the end. So again, just kind of going around these edges, tiny little bit of paint on my brush with a little bit of water and again whatever brush works for you is totally fine so again little corner of my brush just getting these little wriggly pieces of fur out into the um, exterior of the of the um, display of fur you can bring some totally out into here and just I'm trying not to be super consistent with my brush stroke I want it to look you know like it's got lots of um, movement to it but not too curly I'm just trying to emulate what I'm seeing in the in the picture this fur in through here kind of comes down like this so just kind of giving that movement in through there and then down this edge in through here. I want it to look like, I want it to cross over that black so it looks natural. So that's why I'm taking the time to go through those edges and make them the way that I want. So that 
to me looks pretty good. I'm going to um, look and see if there's any other dark areas that I need to adjust. I just want to put another maybe soft layer in through here. So I just picked up a little bit more of my gray on my dirty brush <laughs> just to it looked a little unfinished in through there. And now I think I'm ready to start well, oh, maybe a little bit more darkness in through here, ready to start building all of my light tones. Um, but this, this little area in through here is calling for me to do a little bit more darkness. I'm picking up just a touch more of that dark gray again, because I feel this needs to um, convey what I'm seeing in the photo, which is this dip in the eye in through there with some long fur. So I'm just trying to uh, demonstrate what I see. There we go. That looks pretty good. Um, so now I'm going to start adding my light fur and that's going to be with um, primarily white but I'm also going to be um, using some of that cream tan too if I find areas. I don't want it all to just be white so I definitely um, want to make sure that I have some cream in there too. So I'm going to wash and dry my brush just to start from a clean brush or a clean-ish brush and I'm going to start with some white paint. I know it's super white over in this area so I'm really safe with just kind of going for it over in through here. I'm going to put a whole bunch of white in through here and I don't want to pull it all the way down to the bottom. I don't want to pull it all the way to the face but I know that there's a ton of white fur in through here so I'm pretty safe with just kind of um, allowing for a big large area of white paint and then just making it uh, blend out into those exterior uh, pieces of the of the fur and I'm just going to continue to watch where and how the um, how the fur moves so again I've got over here on the eyes I see couple little wrinkle I don't know if they're wrinkles but it's the direction of the fur in through here and then this has got to kind of be a little bit shorter in through here to um, to talk to that facial fur, which is a little bit shorter. So I'm just getting this to um, connect with that. And then it can get longer as it comes away from that face. And again, curving it around the um, the body of the of the cat, curving it around the face of the cat and that's going to make it look the most natural. So that's looking pretty good in through there. I feel like I want another kind of um, go around at this little um, tuft of hair here. I just picked up a little bit of my cream color and I'm going to bring this. I feel like this wants to be longer and more exposed and more dramatic. So we're just adding a couple of longer kind of pieces going in through here. And I, if you find that once you've got this done that, you know, you want to go in more for some more dramatic um, uh, pieces, like I'm adding a little bit more of that cream color on my brush right now so I can get this little chin to pop out just a little bit more. There we go. And have a little bit more texture to it. There we go. Um, once you've got yours done, and you've got everything in place, that's when you start fiddling. That's when you start saying, boy, I wish this area had a little bit more depth in it. So you probably need a little bit more contrast to it. I wish this area was a little bit lighter, uh, you know, and had a little bit more brightness to it. So maybe you need a little bit more white. Um, I just put white on my dirty brush. So I'm going to uh, come over here. I'm going to get this, these guys in through here to overlap this ear. So again, a lot of this is white right now. I don't really need to um, explore any other colors, maybe just a little bit of the um, cream color as well, but uh, the white with the gray underneath or the colors that we've built underneath will um, will build itself. It'll, it'll allow itself to um, take on the varying tones underneath it, especially since I'm using this bristle brush. So this is going to um, allow all of those colors that we built underneath to um, be seen. So if you're working with really thick, heavy body paint um, and you're losing 
a lot of the detail that you, you put on, you may want to consider either thinning out your paint or using a firmer brush, which will allow it to kind of pull and see some of those layers underneath. Um, I definitely want to add some extra, we need some white up in through here. This is gonna connect this fun fur <laughs> from up in through here. And then we're gonna just kind of pull it over this ear. I feel like I wanna put a tiny bit of water on my brush right now to pull these little pieces over that ear. I don't want to just have like one, I, I want it to look like it's going over that ear. So there we go, that works for me. And then just pulling some of the stuff out, making sure that my original outline that I created where we had that kind of blocked in um, look to the cat, making sure that that is gone. I don't want that to be part of my part of my story. <laughs> so I m will work at it until you can't detect that edge. That was really just a guide for us to build from. It was not intended to be visible through the whole, um, you know, at the end. I'm adding a little bit more white on my brush. Get this uh, little eye part to pop out just a little bit more. And you can see as I'm as I'm building, oh my God, he's so cute. I'm looking at him from this close, but when I step away, oh, he's cute. So just adding more white up in through here. This is a very light area I'm seeing in the paintings or in the photo. So just making sure I've got that area and it all kind of, these little pieces of fe feathers, gosh, fur, <laughs> just start to, it must be, he must be like looking, these, these must resemble feathers to me or something. It, that's probably why I keep saying it. Gosh, sometimes my brain just says, you don't need to know exactly what you're painting. Let's just Let's just think it's feathers for a while here. Um, this is pretty light coming down here, so I just kind of keep adding this light layer. That's looking good. It's got to connect to this little piece in through here, and then I can get this to just um, almost work itself out over into this little bit of a darker area over here. So I, again, don't. I'm watching this dark area. I don't want to over lighten it, but I want a couple of pieces of um, a little eyebrow kind of fur in through here. So I'm just being careful with the corner of my brush that I don't overdo it, just adding some little uh, singular pieces in through there. That's looking good. Maybe a couple in through there. And that's looking good. Little extra lightness in through here. And then I just need to finish this area because this doesn't look done to me because I didn't hit it again. So let's just add another little layer into here. Very little bit of paint is on my brush right now. It is white and maybe remnants of um, some of the cream color, but just making sure I've got another little layer in through there. <laughs> He's so cute. Um, let's see, what else do I need? I don't know how much more I need. He's so cute. Um, so I, I'm thinking I might just call it. I think I, I, I might let it dry and maybe if I need a little bit more in through here just to puff out his forehead a little bit more. Um, but we're going to use our small brush for the next step. So once you've got yours so adorable <laughs> or and to a satisfactory place for you, um, we're going to be using our small brush for the next step. So you can just um, put this brush away if you have, can ever stop painting this cute little cat and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the next step. The next step is whiskers. <laughs> I'm using my small brush. I laugh because I am not the most awesome at painting whiskers. <laughs> I love to have fun and do them and pray and cross my fingers and stuff. They don't always go out as I expect them to, but it's fun trying anyway. <laughs> so I'm using my small brush. I'm going to be using white paint. Um, I might use some of my cream color and in some areas, like there's a couple of whiskers up in through here white on white is not really going to be too visible and when i'm looking at the photo they're actually kind of like a dark gray color so i might be using my gray for some of the whiskers up in through there so i'm going to start with white and water so i'm just going to kind of water down my white paint a little bit 
and you could use a different kind of brush. I find that using kind of a, um, this is a small round brush, but I don't necessarily use the smallest because the a little bit bigger will hold a little bit more moisture in it. There are other brushes, um, I think they're called rigger brushes, where they're really long and slender and they're great for whiskers. Um, but I find that if I just use, this is a number three round, it works pretty well for me. <laughs> okay. So now that I've um, kind of geared myself up, I'm going to, I'm um, wetting my brush, putting some prayers in it. <laughs> so my whiskers are coming out from here on both sides um, and they're long and they can um, go pretty darn far. So once I start, I just kind of um, let them go. Oh, my, my easel is going to get in, in the way on this one. This is going to be even extra fun. I have an obstacle this time. So when I, when I do these, um, I just want to kind of um, not have them all go in the same direction. So you can have them kind of come in off the um, little edge in through here and giving them a curve, but knowing, you know, they're coming out from here, so they could come out in, you know, a sideways direction. They could come out, um, you know, super curved in a inside direction like that. That was almost, almost a good one, but my hand hit the, there we go. We're gonna have two right there. <laughs> um, so you can have them really just coming out in, in different directions and in different lengths. I think that's the, the biggest um, thing with whiskers, just making them look natural with their length and um, with different directions. That's uh, the best you know way to make them look, in my opinion, the most natural. So on this side, I have a ton of them visible because the fur is a little bit darker on this side. So in the photograph, there seem to be more visible over on this side. So I'm just going to kind of go for it and make um, as many as I can before. I'm like, nope, I'm not making any more. <laughs> so I'm making a bunch coming out of this little upper lip in through here and then just kind of out this side. So I just keep adding, my, uh, adding moisture to my uh, paint until it is the fluidity that I want it to be and then I just kind of Knowing that these ones are going off the canvas and out of sight. I can be pretty um, Aggressive with the um, The amount that I'm doing I'm gonna put a couple more kind of coming down and out over in through here and if you felt that it was too much or you need, I think I need um, more coming out in this direction. Um, if you felt that there was too much or you needed to dull them down, you can always go back into your original colors, like your original gray and stuff like that, and dull these down and make them um, a little less invasive <laughs> if, if they've come out too much for you. I need a couple more over in this direction too, just to you know, stay with what I see over there. So that looks pretty good. There's also some at the top of the head and up, like in front of the eyebrows and stuff. So um, this, the photo actually has one crossing right over this eye. Ah, I'm reluctant to do it, but um, let's first start with the one that crosses over this eye. So I don't know where they're coming from. I think they're coming from these little dips in, in here. Um, so I'm gonna take this one here we go. Wish me luck here. This one's going across the eye. We're going to take it and just kind of pull it. Oh, this is scary. Right down. I don't like it. I don't like it. I'm taking it away. I don't want it to distract. I know it's in the photo, but I'm like, oh, I don't. Oh, maybe I'll just dull it down like this. There we go. So it's very faint. Okay. So it's there, but it's just very faint. Um, I'm, I'm cool with that. I'm going to also put a whole bunch more little ones in through here just because that's what I'm seeing. So I can, I can breathe easy now and just kind of put these, um, white ones in through here. Yeah. So I, that, that's totally fine for me. I dulled it down. You could even while you've got this little brush, if, if you feel that you want, um, uh, additional little bright white pieces of fur or anything along that lines, you can certainly, you know, have at it when, once you've got this brush in your hand and you're, um, 
you know, and you're going for those little tiny marks. Like I feel like I could do a couple more up and through here. So I've got the brush in my hand. So why not? Why not go for it when you can? So that's looking good. I'm going to go on this eye or this area now. Now there's some coming again out this area like that one is, but it seems like they're a little bit darker. So I'm going to pick up a touch of my dark gray, my white plus water and just um, put a couple in up here. So just um, hardly touching my canvas, just giving the slight illusion that they're up here and that's fine for me. <laughs> Boy, I'm, and there's one big one right across this eye. Let's, let's, uh, I don't think I'm gonna do it. I think, I can't, I like the eye too much. I'm like, I don't wanna do that. So um, if you wanna go for it, but I'm gonna pick up a little bit more white just to put um, a couple more up and through here if I feel that I wanted um, just a little more uh, white, white ones just to interact with those gray ones especially since my, I'm using my small brush right now, I can, I can get these little tiny pieces in through here. And then I think that's about it. And it would just be a matter of kind of um, tweaking any, any, anything else that you felt might need little, little bits of, you know, finessing. And then we're going to be using this small brush for the next step. So once you've got this done, you can wash and dry the small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so we are on to the final step. This is the final step of every painting, which is to sign it. So I'm gonna be using my small brush. I usually sign my bottom left or bottom right. I'm totally going bottom left on this one. And I'm gonna go with my khaki color. So um, just that khaki color. <laughs> I like to sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly sign yours with your first name or the date. You could sign it with a special symbol whatever you want for your identifying mark to be is up to you because it is your painting and you get to sign it however you would like. And that's gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you painted yourself an adorable cat and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.